Man, got around. OG7 back here. Hey guys, just got in from the um, new TV series that I'm shooting. I thought it was a movie, but it's actually a TV series. And I can't tell you what channel it's on, and I can't tell you the name of the series because of um, the trolls and the haters, man. But I just got in, and I had to make a video today because I've been behind on my videos. And I want to apologize to my Patreon guys. I've been shooting from 5 a.m. to uh, 5 p.m., and I get in exhausted because there's, uh, there's some fight scenes because I play the lead bodyguard. So without further ado, I want to get into the topic of today's video is in maximum security prison. When you catch a booty bandit staring at your cheeks, do this. So what I want to share with you guys, man, like um, when I got out of maximum security prison, the German dude taught me to put it behind me. He said that I had to change my life and my thoughts and my projections to move forward. And then 10 years later, I found Big Herc and I started on prison because I wanted to prevent you guys from wasting your life in maximum security prison. So what happens is I haven't been in prison for 30 years, guys, but a lot of my stories and stuff, they come to me based on uh, events that are happening in my present life. You know what a triggering is, right? Like something traumatic happened in your past and a current event will trigger it, right? That's where the word triggering comes in. So anyway, I was on the movie set today, man, and uh, they got five of us that are like the main bodyguards. They chose me to be the head bodyguard, not because I'm the tallest or the most savage, but I have the most imposing energy, meaning that I can have an I don't give a ish type of a vibe. So I want to tell you what triggered me to think about this uh, this video for you guys today. So anyway, they were trying to determine who was going to be the, the lead bodyguard out of the five of us. And one of these dudes is like, you know, he's like a seven foot tall, 400 pound bald dude. I don't know what, he's racially ambiguous. I don't know what his race is, but he's bald. And honestly, he kind of looks like my, my brother who, who passed. But my brother who passed wasn't seven foot. He was only about like 6'5 or 6'6. Six, six. This guy's a giant. So we all got these black suits on. Of course, they made me take this uh, skull chain off. And they made, made, they made me take this watch off because they said it's too flashy. So anyway, the scene was this, guys. The, the lead dude of this TV show, he's got poisoned by one of his family members because they're trying to get the insurance money, right? The life insurance money. So anyway, he's on his deathbed. And then his family members go in, and my my uh, my assignment is not to let anybody go in go in the door past me, but whoever's already in there, let them out when they come out. So anyway, so the director is he's in front of me with the camera, and the, the big dude man, he's trying to he he's trying to like intimidate me, man. So he's standing behind the director. It's called my line of sight. So this dude's standing in my line of sight, bro, and he's just mean mugging me, bro. And I'm going to tell you guys something, man. A lot of you guys, man, don't understand. Like, I've been fighting big, strong dudes all my life, bro. So I'm not bragging, but I understand how to fight bigger, stronger guys, bro, because I don't use strength, right? So anyway, <laughs> he actually helped me get the part because as I was standing there, I was thinking to myself, and I'm trying to get paid because YouTube's not paying me, so I'm going to try to get this video monetized. So I was just thinking to myself, uh, mofo shall not pass through this door because I don't give a ish and I will rip your head off and poop down your neck and then make you drink it with your decapitated head. I was thinking that in my mind as I was staring straight into this dude, man. I stared at him until he looked away, my friends. And this is what brings me to the topic of today's video. In maximum security prison, when you catch a booty band and staring at your cheeks, do this. So I want to share with you, man, what happens in maximum security prison, dude. You got a lot of lifers. I'm talking about dudes with natural life, double life, triple life, you know, life without the possibility to parole, um, 360 to life, just crazy stuff. So they ain't never getting out. So what they do is like, it's like sharks in the water or piranhas. They're constantly paroling the yard, patrolling the yard to see who's weak. And in prison, man, when a dude stares at you, bro. I'm going to tell you what you got to do because sometimes, dude, you're, you're walking or you're standing somewhere and you'll just feel a pair of eyes on you, dude, like beating the back of your neck, dude. And when you look, 
the dude will do this on purpose, man. He'll be looking down at your cheeks, bro. And then he'll look up at you in the eyes and look just straight at you with a mean mug on his face, man. So what I want to do, I want to share with you guys what you should do when you catch a booty bandit staring at your cheeks. Because this is very important because this is, um, the tests are called escalation of forces, guys. So what they do, because this is what they do, bro. Everybody in prison gets tested. This is what I want to share with you because a lot of you guys be like, Hey, OG Silverback, if a six foot four, 285 pound guy like you gets tested, what, what chance do I have? I'm here to tell you, everybody gets tested because there's a hierarchy in prison from the savages to the gorillas to the sharks to the beasts to the lions and, lions and tigers and bears on oh my to determine who's a sheep or who's a prey or who is, you know, who's a victim. So here's what I want to share with you, man. If you feel somebody staring at your cheeks, man, when you turn around, bro, and the dude's staring at you, bro, what you got to do, bro, you got to look, man, and I want to share this with you, man, because a lot of you guys don't have the ability to stare a dude in his eyes. So what you want to do, you want to look right here on his forehead. There's a thing called a, it's called a pineal gland or, or third eye. You want to look there because what will happen, a lot of you guys don't have the the mental fortitude or savageness to look a guy in his eye and not look away, bro. Because if you're not used to doing it, it's a very alpha, very savage thing. So I help guys all the time. I tell them, look at the peanut, look at the third eye up there. So it looks like you're staring the dude down, man. But, you know, you're actually not. I want to share this with you because um, what happens is, man, there was this movie called Penitentiary, bro. And so they had this dude named Half Dead. So what he would do for the new guys that came in, Half Dead had life. He ain't never getting out. He was a dark-skinned dude, face all beat up, teeth missing. And what he would do for the new guys coming in, like they were, they bring new, they bring new guys in like a busload at a time. What he would do on first unlock, he would play like he was this crazy dude whose wife, you know, was cheating on him, and he came home early from work one day, and the dude was cheating on him with his wife. And he tried to catch the dude, but the dude jumped out the window naked. And all half dude could see was the dude's butt cheeks, right? So what half dude does, he starts screaming, Hey, man, that looks like the dude. That looks like the dude. Let me at him. And all the inmates is holding him back because they ain't on there. They're a booty bandit gang, so they're doing method acting. So this one light-skinned pretty boy dude, not the lead character, but some other dude, he said, man, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. He said, man, let me see your cheeks because I, I can tell the dude's cheeks. I can tell. So just like, no, no, don't hurt me. So he pulls his pants down and half this sees his butt cheeks and he slaps him and goes, yeah, that's my new girl. So what happens when first when, when half this first got in the dude's face, man, I want to share this with you, man. This is very important what you do, bro. When um, when half this man is uh staring at the dude's face, right, what you want to do, guys, is you want to raise your hands in the air like this, guys. Like, hey, what's going on? Because what happens is it's called a preoccupation breaker. The guy's eyes are going to immediately go up, dude. And what you want to do is front snap kick him in his balls and then turn your foot sideways. It's called an instep. Kick him in his knee and slide down his shin and stomp on the top of his foot. And this happens in a matter of seconds. So what happens, the guy's hands are going to come down toward his groin even if you didn't get a, go a good groin kick in because it's a reactionary method. And when his hands come down to his groin, guys, you want to take your hands like this. It's called a cupping method. And you want to slap his ears like that, bro, and grab him. And then bring him forward, man, and put your thumbs in his eyeballs, bro. So you slap him, pull his ears forward, shove your thumb in his eyes. So what's going to happen, guys? His hands are going to come up to, to move your hands away, bro. And when he does that, you're going to take your forehead and bust it bust it into his face like that bro and then what you want to do after you bust it into his face he's going to go backwards bro you do a front you do a front snap kick no it's called a front push kick into his abdomen dude and when it, when he's going to go all the way back man and then you just start running to the collect to the police talking about man sliding down the wall <laughs>